Pena Achó é um dos homens mais poderosos do jornalismo. No Brasil ele ficou conhecido num dos episódios mais dramáticos da televisão mundial, a Guerra do Golfo. Ele transmitiu a queda das primeiras bombas em Bagdá para a CNN. Nossa equipe veio especialmente em Washington para entrevistar esse homem que deu ao mundo um exemplo de profissionalismo e coragem. Vamos descobrir como ele, um filho de um pintor de paredes, uma empregada doméstica, se tornou um dos homens mais importantes do jornalismo norte-americano. Por que seus pais chamam você Bernard Shaw? Minha mãe me deu esse nome, eu não sei especialmente por que ela fez isso, mas... It's been with me now for 51 years, mm -hmm. and I like it. Yes, I sure. Like it. Do, do you think you have the, the same sense of humor of the writer? A different sense of humor. Because I know you are a very tough guy, but I know also that you don't lose your sense of humor even in the worst moments. Is right. it right? That's true. That's true. Tell me about that. Well, I, I suppose one of the uh, most humorous or irreverent things I said during the war in Baghdad was uh, after the air war started on January 16th. I think we, I had been awake for about 36 hours and, and I remember as bombs were falling, I remember saying, you know, gentlemen, it occurs to me, I haven't had dinner. <laughs> and they all started laughing. But yeah. uh, it was just a thought that occurred to me and I thought that that was important to say mm -hmm. because I imagine that people around the world were wondering What is it like? You're right there in the center of Baghdad, it is being bombed, mm -hmm. the war is broken out, and I tried to communicate what it was like. But were you you're the one who decided to stay in the hotel Uh, or uh, which in the bombs, you know, uh, instead of going to the shelter. Mm -hmm. Yes? Was I one? <laughs> yes. yes. Sure? Yes. yes. Why? Why? Because I'm a reporter, and one doesn't get a chance to cover wars very often, but especially a war of this nature. But do you like taking risks? I like taking risks when I know that I'm going to survive safely. In but Baghdad, I did not know. So, this is a contradiction. Yes, well, I'm a contradiction. <laughs> That's great. It's yeah. more interesting. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so you decide to stay there. Mm -hmm. Peter yeah. Arnett, John Holloman, and I decided to stay in room 906. But uh, how hotel. do you feel the danger? How do you feel it? I could feel it under my armpits. My armpits were sweaty. That's all? No, that's not all. I can't all. believe it. Um, no, come on. There was a lot of tension. Hmm. Because uh, the reason why was you did not know whether the hotel would be bombed. But uh, did you did you lose the control? Never. 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 Did you feel the, the, the fear of that? Oh yes, I felt the fear. The the fear you could feel every second, every moment. And? Yes. Th that's all. So icy person. No, it's 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 not a matter of being icy. Uh, I've been a reporter for 27 years, and in effect, I've been training for that moment. When uh, all hell is breaking loose, as a reporter, I'm supposed to be the eyes and ears for people. And I cannot see, understand, and report very well if I get emotional. How do you hide your emotions? I don't try to hide them. I try to control my emotions. Sometimes I, I don't do a very good job of it because sometimes emotion is important in relating a story such as in Baghdad. Mm -hmm. I thought the emotion was very important. But I don't, I don't try to hide my emotions. I try to control them and not let emotions get in the way of reporting. Are you a re religious man? Mm, in my mind and in my heart, I don't go to church every uh, week. Okay, but you feel the, the, the faith. Oh, yes, indeed. Did you pray? I prayed uh, about three times in Baghdad. When? I don't remember precisely when. Um, I know I prayed uh, within hours of the war breaking out. Mm -hmm. um, and I prayed uh, two other times. Once when uh, I was in uh, Amman, when we 
left Baghdad and arrived in Amman and uh, once again in Baghdad. And I'm just going to be quiet and let you listen. Saddam Hussein left CNA uh, stay in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did, did he think uh, you could help him in, in, I don't know, any sense? I don't know whether he thought CNN could help him. I do know that he and his ministers felt that because CNN is seen in 107 countries, it was important that CNN be allowed to work in Baghdad. We were very restricted in Baghdad. We could not get around the city that well, and we certainly could not get around the country. But uh, the Iraqi government felt that because CNN had such worldwide uh, influence in terms of people watching the network, they wanted to be sure we were there so that they could get their message out. Uh, when uh, did you meet him? I interviewed him uh, first in October. What, what do you October. think? Of, what do you think about him? Well, it's difficult to base your impressions on a human being when you've only been with him for. I think I was with uh, President Saddam for three hours, a maximum of three hours talking to him before the interview, during the interview, of course, and then after the interview when we were posing for pictures. I think he's a walking contradiction. He is many things. I think he is uh, uh, shrewd. I think he's intelligent. I also think that he's calculating. And I think he's responsible for the deaths of many people. He's many things. Complex. Person. Complex. And he's still in power in Iraq. Mm -hmm. um, was there a winner in this war? Well, that depends on your point of view. Um, I'm not quite assessed who has won and who has lost. If the war's intent was to make the Middle East less volatile, it is not. The Middle East will always be volatile. And I think that there will be constant warring and fighting and disputes until the Israelis and the Arabs decide on themselves. We have a problem. It's not going to go away. We must sit down together. They will have to do that. The Americans, the Brazilians, the French, the Spanish, the Italians, the Germans, the British, they really won't get the Israelis and the Arabs together until the Arabs and the Israelis decide it is time to sit down and talk. Are you against the war? No. No? no. Do, you, do you think the war is something necessary? In that context, I think that was necessary, that the uh, coalition nations did what they had to do. Um, why? Why? Because of what happened in Kuwait. Saddam invaded Kuwait. And what about the war in general, the idea of the war? How do you feel? What about the war in general? Yeah. The idea of the war? Mm -hmm. Well, the war had a purpose, and the war was triggered by the actions of one man and his army, Saddam Hussein's army, which invaded uh, Kuwait on August 2nd. And the world responded to that invasion, or certain nations of the world, the coalition forces, the nations responded to that. And uh, I don't have any negative feelings about that. No, even, I don't know, I, I'm just asking if you think about people, you know. I always think about people. I know, I know that, I, I saw you. I always think about people. I mean, another <coughs> nation, you know, uh, that there is a difference between the political stuff and, you mm -hmm. know, people, just people in the streets, people. Well, I think of, I simplify governments and nations this way. A government is nothing more than people. A nation is nothing more than people. And at one point in Baghdad, I, I was reporting. I said, you know, there are men and women in those command and control centers that are being hit by cruise missiles and 2,000-pound laser-guided bombs. And then I also pointed out that there were human beings involved when Iraqi warplanes attacked the USS Stark, the United States naval vessel in the Mediterranean Sea. 
and there were 37 American sailors aboard the Stark, which was hit by an Exocet missile. Those two were human beings, and these 37 human beings lost their lives too. Yeah. <laughs> it's so uh, I, yeah. I'm always thinking about human beings in, in, in uh, wartime. Do you believe that we can have peace in the world? No. We haven't had it here before. So what makes us think in the year 1991 that we're going to have it? The, the Human beings just don't change they that are not, quickly. They are not more mature? Human beings uh, are selfish. I think uh, that's the problem rather than maturity. Um, uh, nations in many ways are like children. Uh, nations, children behave uh, when they think it's good for them, especially if they think they're going to get something for their good behavior. Are they ch childish, do you think? Yes, in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, nations are that way too. Do you believe um, that in America you enjoy the total freedom of speech? No. Why not? Total freedom of speech, speech is an impossibility. Uh, in a democracy, we have freedom of speech in this country, but as a reporter, I really don't have freedom of speech. Tell me, tell me about that. Tell you about that? Yeah. Well, I cannot fully express my personal opinions because of what I do. In this program, right now, if you ask me, do I think the Brazilian government should devalue the Cruzeiro because of inflation problems, you're asking my personal opinion, mm -hmm. correct? Now, if I give you my personal opinion, three days later or a week later, when I am reporting a new story, about the World Bank doing something with Brazil because of her currency. The viewers in Brazil will say, I don't trust Bernard Shaw because I heard him say at Nis Lombardi's program that he felt this way about the Cruzeiro and inflation. You see what I mean? Yes, sir. The viewer is not allowing me the right to have a personal opinion. That's because I come out of that screen. Did you suffer any other kind of pressure, I mean, a direct pressure? In Iraq? No, here. E every day, you know. In every day? Mm -hmm. well, well, I mean, who really controls the information? It's a team effort. There's no one person at CNN who controls. And we don't think of journalism as control. It's, it's what you call a, it, it's a collegial effort to gather, to write, and report news. And I don't report anything I don't believe to be accurate. And we try to be fair, and we try to be balanced. But to uh, what? There's no such thing as control and power. There really is not. It is a team effort. Uh, For example, when we were in uh, Baghdad, no one was controlling me and what I said, or what Peter Arnett or John Holloman said because the company, CNN, depends on our being professionals and being dedicated to what we do. Plus, they trust us, just like viewers trust us. If we ever do anything to violate your viewers' trust, they will go somewhere else. That's the most precious thing a journalist has, is credibility, believability. Sure. Imagine you had received a secret report that uh, could endanger the national security. 
The United States National yes, Security? Yes, yes. Would you broadcast it? No. No? Why not? Who, who decided? You, 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 you have to decide well, if by I yourself? The, you, I don't know. It, it depends. If I get a top secret and ultra secret report, mm -hmm. and it would endanger the security of the United States of America, or if it would endanger the lives of uh, American citizens, or if the same report would endanger the Brazilian government security, mm -hmm. or the lives of Brasileiros, I would not report it. Would you like to have, uh, as a report, uh, a story like uh, Watergate? No, I, I don't sit up and fantasize about having the big story. I just don't. Um, in this business, there's an expression, it's feast or famine, meaning there are good days when there's a lot of things going on, and there are slow days when there's nothing going on, when it's dead. And my attitude, I suppose it's because I'm getting older, my attitude is that uh, when the news is slow and there's nothing going on, I put my feet up and relax. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's uh, hectic, you work hard. But what are the limits of ethics when you are trying to get an information? It depends on the situation. I, I regard myself as an ethical person, as a moral person, and uh, you, you make judgments all along the line in the process of gathering, writing, and reporting a story. It's a judgment call. You decide in each instance what is proper. And it's not just a decision I make. It's made in, in concert with executives here at CNN. Well, in some instances, you can get to the real truth. In other instances, you cannot. It's just like uh, during the war, uh, the Iraqi government would only show us civilian damage and casualties. They would not show us military installations that were destroyed or damaged. They would never do that. Mm -hmm. And thus they wanted to give the uh, world the impression that the Americans were hitting civilian targets routinely, and that was not the case. But the Iraqi government made it difficult for us to show that that was not the case. Yeah, but for instance, the Iraqi journalists they, for sure, they had another kind of information. Well, and it, it may for have been them, I, th I think that for them, that was true also. Oh, I believe that. I'm so, sure. I'm sure. <laughs> it's not just one truth. That, no, that's no, it's what a, I mean. It's various versions of the truth. Uh -huh. Various versions of the truth. So, who, who, how can you control that? that? I don't know that you can control it. All you can do is try as best you can to learn all the facts you can. And when you run up against a brick wall, such as censorship, all you can do is tell your viewers, this report has been censored, or we were not allowed to go here, or we could not talk to this person or that person. And you allow viewers, listeners, and readers to decide for themselves. you had um, any influence uh, on the final results of the presidential campaign? In 1988, um, I quarrel with people who say that um, because I asked Governor Dukakis that question uh, in the 1988 presidential race, it uh, caused uh, Dukakis to lose the election. Mm -hmm. It was a strong question. Uh, well, it was a strong question, but it, I, I, I insist it was not the question that did him in. It was his answer. <laughs> sure. It, it wasn't my question. I asked him a simple question. It was his response. Um, a lot of people were horrified. A lot of people were very angry with me. But um, as time passed and people reflected on the answer, um, and he says it was a very fair question. The governor says, I believe uh, Bernie's question was fair. His wife disagrees with him. She says it was totally unfair. Uh, women. Well, <laughs> don't be sexist. <laughs> Do you believe in politics without corruption? Oh, you're asking me, is there heaven on earth? And the answer is no. 
No. No, there will always be corruption in politics, merely because of the way politics comes about. So no way out. Well, um, I think uh, the best thing you can do with corruption in politics is strive to minimize it, to reduce it. But I don't know that it ever fully goes away. You have to live with. Live with, but you, you try to improve conditions. How? Oh, it depends on the situation. If there's greed involved, you try to reduce the, the, the desire to have money. But uh, that's difficult. In the United States, we have a situation where we try to take greed out of politics. Uh, the United States, uh, for instance, the President of the United States, he doesn't make a million dollars a year. He makes a few hundred thousand dollars a year. The members of Congress, they make a relatively small sum of money considering their responsibilities yeah, sure. and what they do. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you cannot get rich doing this. But the problem created is that many times some of the best people decide they don't want to go through that. And some of the best people are not serving in government. So it, it's a, a catch-22 situation. Are you for the death penalty or against it? Am I for the death penalty or against it? I have very few categorical positions on issues. I have very few. And I must be very honest with you, I, I have a deep reluctance about expressing to you my personal opinion about whether I'm for um, the death penalty. Why? Because it's a subject that I report on. And I don't want my personal opinion to be fixed in the mind of a viewer or a reader or a listener. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of uh, care. You care about your image, right? I care about my image, but I also want viewers to know that uh, they don't have to worry about my personal opinions leaking into my work. But you are a kind of leader also. True, true. Who is your leader? But it's leader? a very delicate, it's a very precious situation, and you must handle it very gingerly. Good morning. From Beijing, good evening to you, your time in the United States. If I sound out of breath, it's because I've come down in an elevator and I have run to the CNN anchor position. We were just told by the government of China that about 58 minutes from now, the government will pull the plug on all transmissions out of this nation. That is why we're rushing to get our report on the air to you. What is your ultimate goal in life? I mean, justice, uh, you, you said mission, but justice, money, fame. Well, I, I suppose my ultimate goal in life is not money, it's not fame, nor fortune, knowledge. Knowledge. It's a good thing. To understand. Um, I have one regret. Which? Which I, one? I regret that uh, I will die an ignorant man. I don't think so. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you think you, 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 you have no time to, for all the knowledge that you want to have? Precisely. I know a lot. I, I, I can't But there's so I much that imagine. I don't know. There's so much that I want to know about so many things and so many people. Yeah, well, the curi out of curiosity moves you, that's it. The curiosity yes. moves yes. you. And, and there's not enough time in which to learn. One of the basic reasons for that is that we're all living too fast. Mm -hmm. We're sitting here in Washington now. In six hours, you could be in Los Angeles. In 12 hours, I can be in, uh, in Rio. And in a strong experience like that, the war, do you think uh, you, 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 feel, you feel a different man after all? Oh, yes, I came back a changed man. Much more focused. Not that I was unfocused before the war, but now I truly know what matters to me, who matters to me, and why. Uh -huh. And I try not to waste too much time. Did you go straight to the point now? So. Well, that had been my nature before, but mm -hmm. uh, having long hours to reflect in Baghdad, right in the center of hell, where there was war, 
I came to some uh, conclusions that I think will stay with me the rest of my life. Are you a rich man? Oh, I'm rich in many ways, not monetarily. No? I'm a very rich man in terms of my daughter, my wife, my son, um, the people I love, and uh, my love of life, my love of the world, my love of my fellow human beings. But, um, but do you think a, a journalist... I don't go home and count money at night. But a journalist like you, you know, you're a star here. You are mm. really a star. Don't you think a journalist like you should be as rich as movie stars? I think that's unrealistic. Uh, I think that journalists... Well, I believe in the free market system, so I believe that if movie stars make millions of dollars a year, it's because the market will bear it. And I applaud that. But the market, uh, journalistically, does not bear people... Uh, making millions and millions of dollars and there's some anchors in the United States at the other networks who make millions of dollars but that's not the case at CNN. How do you rate Ted Turner as a boss? I think uh, Ted Turner is a very good boss because he had the good sense to create this network and he had the good fortune to have very deep pockets and to have lots of money and he had the faith in professionals such as myself and others who were hired to do jobs at this network. And the best thing about Ted Turner is that he leaves us alone <laughs> and allows us to do our jobs. That's it. And when we are successful, he is the proudest person, and he should be, because of what uh, he believed in and what he's been dedicated to. And at home, who is the boss, you or your wife? I'm not the boss, and uh, although I might be bossly sometimes, uh, we, we are family at home. I'm not the heavy at home. Uh, my children don't introduce themselves as Bernard Shaw's daughter or Bernard Shaw's son. You are not so tough at home. No, uh, everybody in that house has his or her own life, and, and re we respect one another. And the most important thing is for everyone else to realize that they have a life too, that I'm not the only person in the house. You help your wife in, in the house, housekeeper? Oh, of course. Yeah, sure. Of course. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So, good, good man, a good professional. I'm a good man, but I have flaws. <laughs> Tell me one. One of my flaws? Mm. Mm. One of my flaws. One of my flaws is that I'm too critical of myself. Are you too hard on yourself? Yeah, yeah. I should, I should relax more. Yeah. I really Are you should. working on it? I'm working on it, but it's difficult. Am I a jealous man? Yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah, you are. I, I have jealousies, but uh, I don't like that word, so I try to control uh, jealousy. Mm. Uh, it depends on the situation. Hmm. Ask me a question about a situation, and I can respond. If your wife, uh, about your wife, for instance. In what regard? Oh, I don't know. If no. I came home and found my wife in bed with oh, another man. Oh, come on, this I, is too much. I don't would know. Would I be oh, jealous? I don't know. In this case, I think, what, what are you going to do in this case? I would try to restrain myself. <laughs> <laughs> try to control yourself? Yes, yes, oh. I try to control myself. but. Jealousy, no. I'm not a jealous man. I'm not a jealous man. Because I trust my wife. And I trust my children. As they get older, I trust them even more and more. What is the best news would you like to announce one day? What is the best news? Are you a dreamer? I, I mean, you know. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and I'm a romantic, too. Mm. The best news I would like to announce or report to the world would be the end of hunger on this planet. The end of hunger, uh, the end of disease. Thank you very much for your interview. Thank you. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you.